Too nice for your own good. How do you avoid nine mistakes that are harmful to you? Author's name is Duke Rubin. Sometimes we may act based on our good intentions, and the magic turns against us. How many times have we tried to reform ourselves with the aim of impressing others and trying to reach perfection in their eyes? How many times have we risked time when we should have acted rationally? Has anyone ever told you? Your opinion is important to me, but this response to your opinion was given in order to save everyone you love from trouble. Or your attempts to alleviate someone's sadness? It is possible that you suppressed your anger at a time when you should have expressed it, and these feelings later exploded at the wrong time. And other times you may act more insensitive than necessary because you do not want to disturb your loved ones or hurt their feelings, which makes it forces you to always be rational or considerate of others at the expense of yourself. So, when you feel an adrenaline bomb exploding inside you, don't repress it, unleash it. Stop. Perfection doesn't exist. No person can be perfect at everything. Sometimes, mistakes are major and cannot be overlooked, such as doctors' mistakes or lawyers' mistakes, which could cost the lives of innocent people, and they cannot be tolerated. But what about the small mistakes that can happen, which sometimes cannot even be noticed, but only affect the person himself? We strive to be perfect to meet the standards that others set for us, and this increases the burden on you, and can create feelings you don't need negativity, and the most important thing is to accept yourself as you are. Do not try to please people or change your image in people's eyes to be perfect in their eyes. No matter how much you try to achieve perfection, you will not be able to. This is the human nature that man was created with, so there is no need to place a burden on your shoulders that you do not need. Isn't it enough for the burden you already have? So do not try to give others the opportunity to evaluate you according to what they see you as. The desire for love is something innate, so when your self-confidence is shaken here, you must love yourself. Your view of yourself is the most important, and people will look at you the way you view yourself, so accept your simple mistakes. Don't keep your feelings inside you. Sometimes, a person may feel ashamed to say what he wants, and among the behaviors that have been implanted within us is that nice people do not ask for anything, they just gladly fulfill what is asked of them, without asking for anything. On the other hand, they do not want you to distort their image in the eyes of others, so they are content with silence and insinuation or anger at themselves, because they sometimes want something from others. Most adults have been raised to believe that adults are stable and self-sufficient, so they do not ask for the help of others. This is one of the biggest mistakes a person can make against himself. There is nothing wrong with asking others for help, provided that it does not cost others, whether material or moral. It is not at all impolite to ask a friend of yours to invite you to a luxury restaurant and pay the bill. Anger is also an emotion that should not be suppressed, as it is a time bomb that, no matter how hard you try to extinguish it, will explode sooner or later. It could explode at the wrong time or in the face of the wrong people. The anger resulting from the judge within people produces this reaction after going through an unjust situation. For example, if a four-year-old child had his toy taken from him by his two-year-old sister, then it is normal for the child to cry and try to get it back. The judge inside him ruled that she was guilty of taking away his favorite toy. When one or both parents intervene, they will try to calm the child under the pretext that he is the oldest and let him go and play with another one as he has many toys. They did not know that at this time. They were also judged guilty. Always be honest. There is nothing wrong with asking a close person, such as a husband, brother, parent, or child, to hug you. In the end, you are a bundle of feelings. I ask and do not command. For example, you can say, please, will you hug me for a bit? Try to be positive, specific, and frank in your request, and when you get angry, try to express your anger in the correct way. Isn't your reaction exaggerated, and is it not likely to spoil your relationships with people close to you, or even far away, like your boss at work, for example? Suppressing anger may make you a false person, 
or it may turn over time into self-destructive hatred, and over time it may build within you a desire for revenge and vengeance. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with being tolerant with yourself and with your feelings and desires. Try to express them in the correct way. This is healthy. Interview no logic with logic. You insulted a friend of yours who works in the local administration by saying that he was like a mediator. Perhaps you meant by that that he stayed with others. One of your acquaintances happened to hear about this, and he did not think that you meant that he was colorful and had no fixed principles. Your friend got angry to hear this, so you called him to explain the matter to him, and he exploded at you, accused you of lying, hung up the phone, and so on. Situations that could end a relationship that lasted for years as a result of a mistake in expression. Or try to act rationally. Never try to meet the reckless actions of others with rationality just to prove that you are a tortured person as this will turn against you. In some situations, it is not appropriate to explain the situation rationally and acting rationally at times is considered a way to suppress anger. In these situations, you must first take your time to calm down so that your impulsiveness does not turn into an attack and you try to prove that you are right without looking at the consequences. Then try to put yourself in the place of the attacker and try to play his role. Try to imitate what others do or support it in one way or another. This does not mean that you must be convinced of what he says about you, but rather you want to know if his judgment was in place and he saw what he saw and you were not able to see it. If it is someone close to you, try to exchange roles with him. White lie. There is no doubt that sometimes a person is put in a situation that may force him to lie, and he tries to beautify the idea that he is lying by calling it a white lie, but when this lie is harmful to him, then it is difficult to remain silent about it, because in the end it will fundamentally harm you. Imagine if you work in a closed office that does not have cooling facilities, and at the end of the day you have to sit with your coworker to conduct some checks. This person is skilled at his work, but his smell bothers you. You try to remain silent and not tell your colleague so as not to hurt his feelings, and there was the kindest behavior on your part, and if you tried to deal with him in a rude manner, you could tell him directly that his smell bothers you, and that this would hurt your colleague's feelings, and that it would create psychological conflicts between you, so what can you do about it? You can take some steps that will help you be frank and kind at the same time. Think of the underlying problem as your problem, then begin your conversation by talking about the specific fear you have when telling the truth is uncomfortable. Criticize politely with the goal of solving the problem, not with the goal of hurting feelings. Then consider the various factors to know how, when, and where to start talking about what the other person did to put you in trouble. Think about the person's emotional strength, balance the strength in your relationship, and estimate the amount of frankness that the relationship can handle. Finally, express your respect, describe the healthy relationship you want, and receive a positive response. Keep telling the truth with taste. Keep your advice to yourself. Be supportive, not advising. Listen a lot, talk little. Master the art of the form. And you know that giving advice costs you the risk of ruining the best intentions and may bring you remorse that will charge you with negative energy. You know that giving advice is belittling others unless they ask you for it, as if you are telling them that they lack reason, cannot think, or that you are far better than them, so we must leave others to decide what to do, because a person needs to develop his ability to take care of himself. Sometimes, no matter how much you try to convince yourself of the purity of your intentions and that you advise them for their benefit, from within you learn that you gave the advice so that others would like you. This behavior stems from a sense of arrogance and a desire for control. Instead of giving advice, try to practice distancing yourself in a respectful way by releasing them. Express empathy for their problems and feelings, and ask questions that help them expand and enrich the range of good options. Provide useful information, including testimony from others. Finally, give them gentle nudges toward making the decision. This way you can show your support without interfering in their private affairs. 
and try to give them love instead of advice because that's what they really need. Your expression of love and compassion. So be supportive, not an advisor. Save yourself before others and do not protect them from their feelings. The feeling of love exists deep inside people, but not everyone can express it correctly. Often, when your loved one enters into a state of addiction to anything, you try to get him out of the state he is in, so you start trying to influence him or threaten him with his family or friends, or any kind of threat. When she sees that there is no point in doing so, she goes to help him secretly without intending to cover up for him, such as paying off his debt without his knowledge, or paying financial bail to get him out of prison. Thinking that you are doing the right thing, but what you are actually doing is wrong, because by doing so you will increase his destructive behavior and end his self-reliance, so. Try to help him by sharing your thoughts and outlook on things. Perhaps he can see himself through the eyes of those around him in the true way, without falsifying reality. There is nothing wrong with providing support and love to them, as this would help him solve the main problem, rather than the effects resulting from it. The life of any person is not devoid of sorrows, like the sadness of the closest people, which makes those around him stand by his side to try to calm him down, as it is the most appropriate way to relieve the pain of sadness. Some may think that once the sad person calms down and stops crying and moaning, he has become better. But the opposite often happens, as the person remains silent because he is certain that no one feels what he feels. No one will be able to help him, but if you understand the stages of grief, you may be able to help or relieve him. You must realize that sadness and moaning are the ones that can make wounds heal, not evasion or burying feelings. Death, for example, destroys people's emotional security systems as a result of sadness, and they always feel shocked and the speed of their life slows down significantly at the same time, and it may stop as well, as if they are given time to absorb. The significance of what happened. It is true that these hours are very painful, but like childbirth, they must occur so that they can live. Your mission here is to support them with love and appreciation and help them express their feelings and not suppress them. Do not be effective or pretend, but rather express your feelings with them, as this is a form of support, so be present, heart and soul. Conclusion in the end, you must accept yourself as you are, and not try to reach people's aspirations or fake idealism, as pleasing people is an unattainable goal. This does not mean that you should not strive to be better than you are. But you must pay attention to your inner feelings, so do not allow your kindness to fill you with negative feelings. Remember that being kind never means suppressing your feelings, but you must express them in the right way. Be kind to the people around you, support them properly, show them love, and abandon your inner tendency to seek praise from others. Simply be you. Do not suppress your feelings inside you. You are more worthy than others to treat yourself with kindness.